Good morning and welcome to the 311 Synergy webinar series. Today, we will be reviewing the best of the 2016 311 Synergy Group Meeting. I am Leslie Hamm, Director of the MC311 Customer Service Center in Rockville, Maryland, and I will be both moderating and presenting today. Presenting with me are Margaret Wright, Director of the 311 Customer Service Center in Dallas, and Sharon Gamble, Customer Care Administrator for the City of Fort Worth. Let's start with a brief overview of the 311 Synergy Group. We are an industry networking group for current and prospective 311 customer contact employees throughout North America. There is a lot of information sharing, networking, education, and it's a lot of fun. This group is open to all municipalities with an interest in 311, and we invite you to join our group on LinkedIn. This program will be recorded and available for playback along with our other archived presentations later this afternoon. You will find it by selecting 311 Synergy Group under the webinars drop-down menu on the csweek.org homepage. During our presentation, if you have any questions, please upload them to the Q&A panel and remember to select all participants so that everyone can see them. We will address your questions at the end of the presentation where we have allotted time for questions and answers. With that being said, let's get started. A little bit about this year's participants. Of those who completed the survey, and there were 52 participants who actually completed the survey, 52% were first timers and 8% attended for the third time. 100% of the respondents work for a municipality or other government agency. 24% had made a presentation at the 311 Synergy Group meeting. 51% were focused on learning more about business processes, and 55% felt that the information provided was of value to them and their company. Wow, we had a record-breaking attendance in 2016. Over 120 participants from over 41 municipalities across North America. Here's what participants liked best about our 311 Synergy Group meeting. They loved the high energy. Uh, this was not your typical boring meeting where everyone kind of just sits around and listens to PowerPoints. There was a lot of activity, a lot of energy, and folks really enjoyed that. Uh, if you notice, quite a few of the folks at the, at the Synergy meeting were newbies. And because of that, I think the second one, discovering that you are not alone with your challenges was probably one of the most important things. Um, I know for myself, when I joined a few years ago, it was so nice to be in the company of people who were dealing with the same things as us and being able to share solutions back and forth. A thing that we did new this year is that we, got, we had some expert discussions uh, from other industries. So, experts in the call center arena, but not necessarily 311. And I know personally I found that fascinating. Of course, the networking. It's really probably the most important thing that you get out of coming to these meetings is that you get to know others who are sometimes near you uh, in your region or sometimes uh, far away in Canada or across the country. Uh, but what a difference that makes when you meet folks and then you can start reaching out. Hey, like for instance, right now we're moving our call center. And wouldn't it be nice to be able to reach out to someone and say, hey, have you done this before? And what kinds of things did you consider? So that's super important. The presentations and the presentation presenters this year were very, very interactive. And it kept people very engaged, uh, had lots of follow-up questions. So that worked out really well this year. Another thing, especially for our newbies, uh, was that it's a very welcoming group of professionals. I know when I first came on, I was a little felt a little bit daunting uh, because I was just getting into the 311 uh, information and community and everyone was just so kind and so caring and so welcoming and I know I really appreciated that and I'm sure of all of our new friends um, that came this year were um, felt the same way. 
People really enjoyed the panel discussions and the hands-on activities. Again, keeping people engaged, keeping people active. Uh, we also got to meet some people that are in, in the industry, not just 311, but other industries as well. Um, and that was helpful. Uh, we had folks who were customer service representatives there. We had supervisors. We had directors. We had business analysts. Uh, we had some technology folks. So there was a lot of different folks to talk to to learn more about the 311 process. The other thing that people really appreciated was really the open and candid sharing of information among the various centers. And this kind of goes up to uh, something I already discussed about, which you, you discover that you're not alone with your challenges and that people are more than happy to help uh, to share with you what they did to resolve those issues. And of course, the last three were the highlights of the event. Uh, Margaret's Jeopardy-style presentation of the survey results was a big hit, and Donna's Managing Millennials presentation was also very informative and very amusing. And then, of course, at the very end, a $250 bottle of scotch fell on the floor, and we all got a little contact high for a few minutes, uh, those of us who were up on the front stage. All right, so this is one of these word walls. I love these, but it kind of points out, gives you an immediate um, idea of the kinds of things people loved. Presentations, you can see, is big. The interactions, the discussions, the networking, um, hearing from each other about the kinds of things that they do. Uh, people really, really enjoyed that opportunity. All right, so time to get ready for CS Week 311. We want you to start making your plans to join us in Texas for our first ever 311 conference in May of 2015. Uh, excuse me, 2017 at the Fort Worth Convention Center. You can visit us at www.csweek.org to learn more about that, and pretty soon there's going to be a new website coming, so you'll have even uh, more information than we do now. This is a good time to start talking to your senior leadership about how your experience at this year's meeting had such a positive impact on your people, your processes, and your technology. Uh, so this is the time. You've got to start talking about it. I know for us, uh, the next one here, beginning the justification memo to your budget team, to say, look, let me tell you what I learned this year and how it helped me make changes to our process or enhancements to our process so that we could show that return on investment. For instance, after the first year I came to the conference, I learned about what was happening in Philly with their community engagement team, and we've been really struggling about kind of getting the word out about 311 in our community. So I came back, we got all set up, we've been doing it now for a couple of years, and it's been a really, really sec successful endeavor. All right, so next I'm going to turn it over to Margaret Wright, and she's going to give you uh, some information about the 311 Comparative Survey. Margaret, look forward to your presentation. Thank you, Leslie. So as Leslie mentioned, uh, we did a little bit different format this year. Um, we had the first after lunch spot. So the thing that we really wanted to do was make sure everyone stayed awake and engaged. So we did a Jeopardy style presentation and uh, we com everybody competed by tables. Uh, and I do c compete is the operative word there. So if you are familiar with the, the Jeopardy format, the answer pops up and your challenge is to respond in the form of a question. So for example, our first one is to provide data that reflects how my 311 center compares to other centers. And the winning question is why does the 311 Synergy Group conduct a comparative survey? Just as the name describes, it provides lots of information about how your center compares to others across North America. Our second prompt, general characteristics, function supported, operations, performance levels, staffing, budget, communication channels, and new initiatives. What are the main topics covered in the comparative survey? All right, <laughs> you got a little advanced there. So, 44 cities. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I've skipped ahead there. Let's do this one first. <clears throat> Seven years, which is, okay, sorry, y'all, my uh, 
my keyboard is not working very well today. So let's try that. How many years has the 3-in-1 Synergy Group collected survey data? So it's a good way to see trends from year to year, particularly if you're a participant. You can go back uh, the last X number of years and see what's happened since then. 44 cities. How many cities participated in the survey this year? And you get a wide variety. You have cities that have three agents in their call centers to over 100 agents in their call centers. So there's really something for everyone. It's not just valuable for large cities, um, but truly you can find someone to compare with no matter how large your city is. So the next question, or rather the answer prompt, is 27% of 3 one centers are similar to McDonald's. How many 3 one centers serve over a million customers? That's the most common response, um, but we have uh, any, the second most common response was between 150 to 300,000 customers. The majority of 311 centers report to this office. What's the office of the city manager? And the next most common response was the mayor's office. The other than New York City, the highest number of calls answered. What is 3.4 million? We're looking at you, Chicago. The average number of calls answered every year is just over a million. 311 quality programs focus on this aspect of the customer interaction more than any other. What is accuracy? And so that points up one of the things that you can find out about in the survey is who's doing quality monitors, how many are they doing per month, and what are they monitoring for? Accuracy, uh, their tone of voice in speaking with customers, all of that information is available in the survey results. 30% of centers are open on this schedule. What is 24-7? Again, that's the most common response and the most common operating hours of our respondents. This is a percent of centers that are open on weekends. Not every center is open 24-7. Not every center is open on the weekends. 26% are, though. This occurred between 2006 and 2010 for most 3-1 centers. What's the first year of operation for the majority of our 3-1 centers? So you've got centers that have been open five to 10 years are the, are the uh, majority of respondents. This is the most common city function handled by 3-1 centers. Can you guess? What is street maintenance? The next most common are questions about garbage pickup and recycling. Other three-digit call lines that are supported by a few 311 centers. What are 211 and 511? If you're not familiar with those, 211 is a social services uh, uh, helpline, and 511 is a traffic and transportation uh, line that actually was started by the Federal Highway Administration. 311 centers play these two main roles in an emergency operations center. What are a point of communication for residents and active participation in the EOC? The EOC participation and what do you do in cases of emergency, those are new questions that have been added in the last few years because um, we're seeing that 311 is playing an increasingly vital role in emergencies in cities. The majority of 311 centers screen for these three skills when looking for new hires. What are basic PC skills, writing and grammar, and keyboarding? Again, one of the other things you can find out about from looking at the raw data is who's testing for what. Um, if, so if you need to find out if someone's got a particularly good screening test they like, you know who to contact.
most 3-1 training classes last this long? What is three to four weeks? The majority of 3-1 centers have an abandonment rate between these percentages. What is zero to 10%? The other thing you can find out in the, in the survey data is what's the service level. Um, you can find out the percentage of handled calls and the average talk time. So again, tons of data. Those who submit their center survey data receive access to this information. What is the 3 one comparative survey raw data? I will tell you just personally, it's been invaluable for me. I refer to it several times throughout the year, particularly in budget deliberations. It's so helpful to know how my center compares to others and what I can learn from my colleagues across the country. Email Amber Wins at csweek.org. How can my city participate in the 311 Synergy Group Comparative Survey? If you want to be in the survey next year, please let Amber know. We also have uh, a summary report, um, very high level of the responses. If you're interested in getting that report as well, contact Amber. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Leslie. Thank you, Margaret, for the information. Next up, Sharon Gamble from the City of Fort Worth will give us a brief overview of the 2016 311 Technology Survey data. Thank you, Sharon, for joining us today. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, I was on the Technology Survey Committee this year, and it was fascinating to me because I needed to know the equipment that every 311 was taking advantage of. And like Margaret said, the advantage of having the raw data is invaluable uh, when you're making budget decisions and also when you want to talk to the customer, the actual customer that's using the equipment. We took a little different uh, turn on the technology survey. We did a three-year comparison. Uh, we've been doing this uh, survey for three years, and we've learned so much from doing it. Uh, the comparison that we were able to, because we've changed it each year, but we looked at the 24-7, we looked at virtual servers, uh, active directory, our CRM, and disaster recovery in the IVR, comparing all three years. Uh, Three-year comparison, it was interesting, we're going towards 24-7. Uh, uh, in 2014, we had 35% respond 24-7 uh, hours, and in 2016, we're up to 45%. Our virtual servers, another, we're becoming more technical. Uh, we have, in 2014, you can see the, the growth of it, 61% to 89% in 2016. Also, Active Directory also it's uh, fascinating that uh, of the people that we uh, responded to our surveys, 90% uh, in 2016 used this directory. Our CRM, we uh, asked the question uh, in the beginning, we wanted to know if it was hosted locally or if it was integrates with the phone system. It's kind of fascinating that what we have found. We're pretty steady on uh, having a CRM but hosted locally is uh, going down. And then uh, integrates with phone system is going up. It's, it's all good. Then our next slide, disaster recovery. Uh, 24, or I'm sorry, 2015, we were naive in what we were asking. 55% we asked yes or no, and they answered. And then we got kind of smarter in 2015 and 16, we said, is it tested? Do you actually have the plan? Are you actually testing it every year? And then is it formalized? Is it written? So uh, to, it's interesting. We're going back to uh, being more uh, formalized and some than thinking or, or, I'm sorry, so planning or thinking about it. And the IVR was self-service. Uh, we were looking to see 
what calls were diverting using our IVR. Uh, in 2014, 74% of us were using an IVR with self-service, and 2016, 82% of us. Uh, the IVR versus a menu option. Uh, basically, do we have an actual IVR that's voice reactive or do we have a greetings on our phone system? You can see that uh, self-service, the IVR is hosting 83% in 2016. We're skill-based, routed 64%, and we resolve 21% of our, our uh, calls using the IVR. And that range, like uh, Margaret was saying, it ranges from 1% to 60%. Uh, our menu options, uh, it's 18%, 45% uh, of our calls are routed, and 5% are resolved. And then vendors. It was important to me to actually look up who was using um, certain systems. And so uh, I just, uh, to name a few, uh, the call recording portion, who's using what. So then I was able to go to these customers of these vendors and talk to them about the product. Uh, workforce management the same way and then the CRM and quality monitoring. It's truly one of our highlights of being in uh, the, C, uh, the 311 Synergy Group. And that's what I have for the technical survey and I will hand it back to Leslie. Thank you Sharon for that glimpse into the 311 technology survey. All right, so participants who are joining us on the webinar, if you have any questions for our presenters, please submit them through the Q&A panel to all the participants so that everyone can see them. Do we have any questions? Oh, I'm, I'm seeing one now. So how do I make sure that I can get the survey so that I can get the raw data? Do you want to answer that question, Margaret? Sure. What's really important for both the technology survey um, and the comparative survey is to participate. So make sure that Amber uh, and the CS Week folks have your contact information and that, so that you're on the distribution list when the surveys uh, are issued, which is typically end of the calendar year, first part of the, of the new year. Um, because the only way you can get the raw data itself to know, well, exactly which city, for example, uses which particular vendor is to be a participant in the survey. So that's really important. Thank you, Margaret. Um, I wonder if folks have ideas about what other types of questions we might or topics that we might include in our comparative survey. I think it would be great to hear from you folks about what else you'd like to learn more about. All right, so Bianca Moore has uh, given us a question. How are we reaching out to new 311 centers to make them aware of the group? I'm assuming she means the 311 Synergy Group. Um, I, can, I can talk a little bit about that. One of the things that we did um, before the, um, this year's uh, 311 Synergy Group meeting is that we tried to really send out information ahead of time. Uh, Tom Lake was on the pre-conference uh, communications committee and I know he reached out to people personally to see if uh, they were interested in becoming involved. Uh, we also had uh, Patty Mendoza from Austin um, is sending out, I believe, monthly newsletters that talk about the opportunity to get involved with the group and that kind of thing. So uh, there's probably more that we can be doing, uh, but at this point, uh, you know, we, that was actually probably one of the, the criteria that helped us get to such a greater number of uh, participants last year. All right, uh, another question from Dee. Uh, Dee said, maybe I misunderstood, but why did you say that the 2017 conference would be the first 311 conference? So uh, we're actually in the process of uh, doing some rebranding of the 311 Synergy Group. And so right now, just as a placeholder, we're calling it the 311 Conference. Um, you're, you probably uh, remember that uh, usually what we call that is the Synergy Group Meeting. It's not a true conference, um, but we're kind of looking at doing some things a little differently uh, upcoming for 2017. 
And uh, again, if you uh, kind of watch the, the newsletters, uh, that kind of thing, visit the CS Week website on a regular basis, you'll be updated on kind of the progress we're going to be making to this, this new and exciting venture that we're going to be going on. So uh, Cecilia asked if the slide deck can be sent to participants. Uh, what will happen is that the presentation is being recorded, so the, that will be available on the CS Week homepage, um, and you're going to click on the 311 um, Synergy Group under the Webinars drop-down menu, and you'll have access to not just the slide deck, but also the recording that goes along with it. I hope that helps. All right, so Cecilia uh, has another question. Do you have to have a call center to participate in the survey? Uh, and I'm not sure if that's the comparative or the technology, but I guess we'll, we'll do it for both of them. Sharon and um, Margaret, would you like to talk a little bit about that? This is Sharon, and uh, the questions on the survey are, uh, are tailored to a call center, but if you're in the mix of of uh, creating the call center, uh, the data would be invaluable to you. I know that uh, there is, in the comparative survey, there is a presentation that is available uh, that you could get a high-level view that would be helpful. And this is Margaret. I would I'd add to that that, um, again, lots of organizations may have some of the infrastructure, the the technology um, where uh, that that's used by other call centers, or if you're thinking about a call center, as long as you have um, some data to share, um, then we're happy to have you in the in the survey. Thank you, Margaret. Okay, well, it looks like uh, we have, uh, we're wrapping up on the questions. Just a few more things to consider. Uh, so we talked about uh, getting ready for the new CS Week 311. We want you to get excited about it. So I already mentioned these a couple of different ways. is really to catch the free monthly webinars, uh, such as the one today. Um, you might be even interested in uh, presenting in one of the webinars, which would be great. Um, talk to your staff about what topics they'd like to learn more about so that you can take that with you to the conference that we're going to have in uh, 2017. You might want to look in your, in your region to find out, can you reach out to other 311 centers in your area to see if they plan to join us? Uh, this year we're looking at doing something new as a way to get more uh, call, uh, 311 customer service centers involved is to participate in our meet, quote unquote, fill in the blank 311 program where we're looking at doing sort of little short videos or little short presentations about different uh, call centers around the country and around North America. So that's something to think about is to get, start getting excited. We also want you to be engaged with CS Week 311. Read the monthly newsletters that um, Patty sends out. They usually have great information in them, and I think you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, Pretty soon we're going to talk about what it means to present at the conference, and we're going to start accepting presentations very soon. A great thing about presenting at the conference, not only will you get some, develop some new skills, but you'll also get a discount on your registration, uh, which I know has been a really great incentive for a lot of folks. In addition, it's a great time to decide which committee you'd like to volunteer on. Um, all of us are volunteers. Uh, we have several different committees. Uh, and on this slide, it shows the 
contact folks for each of them. We have the planning committee that puts together the agenda uh, for the each meeting. We have a sponsorship committee uh, that's super important. So the more sponsors that we get, uh, you know, the, the way we can keep our own costs down. Uh, I mentioned the pre-conference committee that Tom Lake did. Patty is uh, working on the communications. We have an award of excellence, and Lynette Lemon from Atlanta is working on that. Uh, the technology survey that Sharon um, talked about today, uh, Toya Williams is the point of contact. And then, of course, comparative survey, Margaret Wright uh, is the point of contact for that. Cheryl Jones in Dallas is working on the yearbook, so if that's something you're interested in, you should contact her. And then, of course, we have the webinars, which you're listening to today, and Richard Castillo is the chair for that. So call for presenters. We invite you to give back to the 311 community by sharing your experiences. Uh, this is your opportunity to kind of give back for all of the information that you've gotten in previous years. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, the spring conference is going to be in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, May 2017. Uh, we haven't actually got the uh, actual dates locked down, but we hope to do so soon. If you're interested in, in presenting, and I hope you are, uh, you want to download the application online, and this is the, the URL that you'd use, www.csweek.org slash web slash 311. So I hope you'll take, you know, try that out and see. I think that you, even though you might be nervous about public speaking, you'll find that um, you'll really, really enjoy it. Okay. Thank you again to our presenters today and to all our attendees. Again, take a look at the 311 Synergy Group found on LinkedIn for industry news and networking opportunities. This will conclude our webinar, and we hope you have a great day. Thanks again.